just finished making the lemon shrub. This is a variation on the blackberry shrub that I made previously. And uh, unfortunately, there was just this pesky, tiny, tiny little amount left. It wasn't worth putting into another bottle. So I've put it aside to have a little try later. Well, spoiler alert, I have already had a couple of sips whilst it's hot. And oh my goodness, it's amazing. Oh, I'm in love with this drink. It's um, it's like winter, winter in a bottle. Um, and it's actually really nice heated up. I haven't had it warm before. It's like, takes me right back to German markets in December in Edinburgh and uh, marzipan potatoes and candied nuts and um, mulled wine. And this is right up there. <laughs> The system wasn't entirely successful. The rats are more cunning than I. I heard it in the wall the night before. Put the trap down in the bathroom underneath the bathroom floor, and lo and behold. <laughs> At least this system works really well, so more or less I'll hear a rat. The next day I'll put the trap down and I'll catch the rat. But it means that um, they have more ways of getting inside than where I put that extra roll of spiky gutter guard. So <laughs> I'm just going to have to live with it. Anyway, <laughs> on we go. Time to go and release it. Come on, ratty. You find me in town today because finally the car's getting a new windscreen. I've got a loner car and I thought I would um, hit some of the shops. I like doing um, charity shop hauls. I know that everyone calls it pre-love now, but you know, I quite like doing charity shop hauls. Um, trawls, <laughs> not hauls, trawls for our secondhand clothes. Anyway, I thought uh, since I'm in that part of town, I go and have a look and see what there is. I've got a Salvation Army and uh, one other one, I'm not too sure what it is. But I've got a couple of hours to kill. Um, I've just picked up our chainsaw, which went for its service. We get it serviced properly annually. It's such an important tool that uh, we really like to take good care of it. So it goes to an authorised husk barn, a dealer to be I'll tart it up on. You can probably see me now, not that that's better. <laughs> anyway, let's go and see what we can see. I would never wear them off the property. They're maybe a size too large for me, but I don't mind that. Gardening in. So, might get these. I, uh, I don't think I'll get the velvet top. It's really pretty, but um, the necklines maybe not quite for me. Well, that was fun. I went to another place next door and got myself a German street manufactured shirt for five dollars which is two pounds fifty 
nice cotton striped shirt um, which will be excellent for summer and our trip to Queensland for the opera later in the year so I'm very pleased with that I'm now off to go and get some bits and pieces for cleaning the car now that I've got that nice new car and hopefully once I've finished here I'm going to pick it up and it's got a intact windscreen <laughs> I've become obsessed with cleaning it we used to have an MX-5 and I was quite obsessed with cleaning that too but I've am um, slowly stocking up on my auto blim products <laughs> and um, it's my once a week ritual it's actually quite um, I find it quite relaxing quite meditative just focusing it wax on wax off anyway <laughs> So that's my latest obsession is buying, buying cleaning products for my new car. I'm back from the windscreen place now. I took a packed lunch with me because I didn't know how long it was going to take. So rather than taking it all the way home, I've stopped in this lovely park <laughs> on my way home to have my picnic. You know, according to the car, it's 18 degrees out. When I was thinking, it's funny how you adapt. If this is Scotland, I would be convincing myself this is t-shirt weather. But this morning I was thinking, oh, I wonder what coat's the appropriate coat to wear. <laughs> anyway, since I'm stopped, I thought I'd just quickly show you the things that I got from town. Don't expect to have your mind blown. This is quite basic stuff. <laughs> um, so I got this nice windscreen washer. With a breather, I just use water. But I thought, no, I'll, I'll, I'll amply it up for this, um, for my new car. I got this. Because I have found that it can be quite difficult actually to get some of the insects and um, insect remains off parts of the car. This was a bit fancy, I got this. I got the Auto Glim um, Rapid Aqua Wax or something. You spray it on when the car's wet and then you sort of buff it in. I've used cloths I had, but I thought that might be better. Uh, I think there was one other thing. Oh yes. SCA stands for Super Cheap Auto, so it's basically the Super Cheap Auto's own brand. What I liked about this is that it says that um, it's got a dust repelling formula, because I found that um, the interior can be sort of staticky in a weird sort of way. Not staticky, but dust seems to stick to it and it's hard to get off. Anyway, so <laughs> this is my little haul. Um, as I say, I've already got some Auto Glim cleaning products at home. This isn't the extent of what's on my list but I'm having to stagger what I buy and when for economy's sake and then um, I mentioned it but this is the shirt I got from um, the charity shop. I'm, I got a German street shirt from another manufacturer. This is actually a gentleman's shirt but it's a really nice fit. It's um because it's a slim fitting shirt, it's actually it's got quite a nice amount of bulk on me. This is a very nice quality shirt. So anyway, yes, all my cleaning products. Let's um, put this bad boy behind me, which is the new love of my life. <laughs> I love this car so much and I'm determined to do a good job of looking after it. I was thinking about it and it occurred to me that this might be the last um, petrol power car that I buy in my life unless I live up my dream of one day owning a Jaguar E-Type. This technology is, is being phased out quite rightly. We would probably have got an electric car, except for the fact that being off grid, it would have involved us having to install a brand new electric system in another part of our property, in another building. And that would have basically doubled the cost of buying the electric car. And we're not in a position to do that. Our current system wouldn't have su supported charging a car and it's in the wrong location. So anyway, maybe one day, well, no doubt, definitely one day, but for now. There we go. Oh, gone. 
enough of yesterday's silliness. Um, we're back to reality and um, there's a couple of things that I've got um, that I'd like to show you and then a couple of projects that I want to introduce to you and um, update you on. So I'll spin you around and then we can make a start. The first thing I want to show you is this beast, which is a uh, post hole digger. Um, it's currently got an auger bit on it and over here, the other side of the mowers, are a couple of spares of different sizes. Um, so essentially it's got a little engine, much the same as our generator and our water pumps. And using these simple controls up here, you power this screw, this auger bit into the soil and it digs paste tools for you. Uh, we were experimenting with this yesterday over at the orchard. So we can, uh, we can go and take a quick look. So here we are. This is where we just gave it a quick go. Obviously it's a work in progress, but we just wanted to see how it would cope with the ground. Our ground is notoriously rocky, but you can see looking at this, how beautiful this soil is actually. Um, I think it's because this was a an orchard and once upon a time, the soil's probably been improved. These are also some additional poles that came. So we should have all of the um, poles we need. This is the metal cladding which came off a, a shed that someone was taking down. And the trade was that we could have it for free so long as we transported it. <laughs> And so our plan for here is to use the poles, which mostly are poles that were removed from the old orchard fence, to add more poles between these current poles and we're going to turn this into a wood store. If I come inside it'll give you a bit of an idea of the scale of it. So these two poles is the uh, width and this is the length and then these two poles again are the width. It's possibly bigger than it's looking on camera. I'd say that was maybe five or six meters and the idea is we'll, as I say, add extra poles where there are gaps and then all along here because obviously there are no poles here. We'll add wood along the top to support it and for the roof and then we'll use this hopefully we'll do the walls and um, then we'll see what else <laughs> we need to get to, to finish it because I don't know that this will do the whole building but we'll we'll find out. At the moment we're thinking we won't put doors on these ends. So essentially um, this is the end. These walls will be solid. This is the other end. We might put a little bit of metal but essentially this will be open at least for now just to keep things simple and um, to keep the expense down but obviously that might change over time. Our hope is that we'll have enough space to drive our ride-on lawnmower with a trailer through. So we'll have basically a, a little road all the way through and then either side we'll have bays for wood. And um, the reason that we need such a big shed is because not only do we want to store all of our firewood in, it, in here, so we've got our kindling down there, our firewood that's been processed and this is our seasoning pile which is bigger than it looks because it's double layer. Will, for his woodworking hobby, has all of this wood.
He has all of this wood. This wood. This wood. This wood. And... All of this wood. So the idea is that I'm using quite a lot of the wood that's behind me for the supports and the roof beams using the posts that we will that we've removed and will reuse plus a couple of extras that were donated to us plus the cladding which we got for free we can essentially build a quite large wood store to have all of this wood not only all in one place but also under cover so it'll be a lot safer and because we've got all these materials for free or materials that we're reusing hopefully it'll be pretty cheap so that's important to us who don't have a lot of spare cash um the um post hole digger is something that belongs to will's dad so that was donated to us for the project so we've got that for uh, as long as you need it really, but I should hope that we'll be done digging the paste holes and putting those up in the space of a couple of weeks. Whilst we've got it, we're also going to be able to put up the uh, mailbox, which I made quite a long time ago now. We've got a paste for that here. Um, but the problem I had was that I, tr I tried to dig a, a paste hole for that by hand, and it just wasn't doable. The soil behind me in the orchard has been improved over time, so it's very, very friable. But the soil where the post box is going to go at the top of the road is basically more or less stone. Um, it's very, very difficult to dig. So we're hoping this will help us. It might not solve all of our problems, but we're hoping that we might make the job a little easier and whilst we've got it there's one other project that we're going to do the lay the foundations for and that's out here and what we're hoping to do here is essentially build a lean-to um, i'm not too sure it'll come out to but imagine sort of something like that so it'll just basically be a couple of posts and some corrugated roofing which we have access to we won't need to buy that and this will be a means of being able to store our trailers, of which we now have three, and our ride-on mowers, which means that we won't need to keep them in this shed, but also means that um, they'll be under cover, which, is, which will be much better for them. Owen. <laughs> Just so you know, whilst her, whilst my father-in-law was here, he and I uh, managed to fix the old water pump. So that's running like a dream now. Um, he showed me a few tips and tricks to, as to things to make it work. So I've got some some good advice and hopefully I can keep this ticking over. But for now, I think we'll just keep the other one on because that's working fine but it's good to know we've got a backup in this in this environment where we're so off grid and reliant on ourselves and our ingenuity which is very limited i've discovered that having backups of things so like two pumps <laughs> two mowers two cars multiple trailers um actually is very useful because it's a tough life and it takes its toll on equipment, you know, even things like two chainsaws. Um, so because we're also very weather dependent, the last thing you want is, you know, suddenly a nice sunny day and your one mower's not working. So it's a, it's a bit annoying having to find space for all this stuff as well and kind of getting ahead around the fact that you're acquiring all this stuff. But um, I've discovered that in order to live off-grid successfully, you do need a plan B. 